Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 383, I'm about to lose count myself, uh, featuring the final installment of my interview with the fabulous Bob Clardy. This part of the interview, we talk about the dastardly scandal known as the Sindant debacle. Really just uh, amazing stuff that went down involving uh, most of the big players uh, back in the 90s, including uh, Sierra. Uh, so uh, if you haven't heard about this scandal, or even if you had, I think you really want to uh, stick around and hear the details from somebody who was there. Uh, we also talk about my pattern designer, Cow Patties in Odyssey, the complete app venture. <laughs> hey. Uh, and and uh, we also talk about Bob's other hobbies, which I, I thought were worth putting in because I know a lot of you guys will want to hear about them. He's into uh, karate, as well as collecting masks and uh, really weird clocks. So <laughs> why not? Uh, we also talked some about uh, Ken Williams, uh, some stuff about him you might not know, not necessarily all uh, complimentary either. So anyway, there's a lot of great stuff here. So without further ado, here is Mr. Bob Clardy. Right. So right around that time, though, um, all these companies were coming together and we began to be introduced to some people from a company called CUC, which was a holding company that Sierra was also talking to. CUC, I don't even remember what it stands for. CART, is I forget what doesn't matter that that name lasted a couple of months before <laughs> before it was replaced so CUC was a holding company they had a bunch of um, bunch of other brands and they were interested in buying brands and then there was another company called HFS which also owned a bunch of brands they owned Howard Johnson's they were you know bigger brands Howard Johnson's and I think a brand company could come up with a better name for itself. <laughs> well, they did. So these, these two these two companies with these horrible names joined together, and they called the result Sendant. That's a little bit better, but still, it's kind of generic. But anyway, Sendant. This this was all happening in '96, I think. And uh, so these come. So as part of this, uh, Sierra became one of their brands. So Ken got his big payout and and joined this. Sometime late in 96, he left. He was no longer management. They brought in new management, and I didn't like any of them. Um, what didn't you like about them? They weren't computer people. They weren't gamers. They, were, uh, they believed that software was commodities. They didn't believe in teams. Uh, they, they would come in and tell these – Sierra had a lot of in-house teams, but also others like uh, Papyrus in, in Oregon was another one that – you know these, they, they had teams that had been together for 10 years, 12 years, people that really knew each other and worked well together, and they know how to do their games, and they have their brands, and they know, you know what's coming next you know, for, their, for their line of product. These new managers would come in and say, no, no, we'd like you to do something different. You know, we're going to have a tie-in with uh, some other – uh, license and we want you to you know change what you're doing well the team leaders would object to that they'd get threatened some of them got fired whole teams quit in mass when that happened um, and because of that the they then had a policy that they established fairly shortly after that of no teams stay together after a product ships when you when the product ships you break the teams up and mix and match with other teams so that nobody knows anybody anymore. Nobody is working with a buddy. Uh, everybody hated that. People started defecting left and right. And the products started going downhill, which means profits went down, which means budgets went down, which means they started laying people off. You know, whole divisions were shut down just left and right. So, well, that was the start of it. Then it got way worse because... Oh, wow. Then uh, it turned out that Sendant, um, uh, I think it was the CUC side of the of the merger there, had apparently had some accounting irregularities. They called it where they accounting irregularities. Yes, yes. Uh, they inflated their value and used that to drive the stock up. They used the stock to buy more companies. They made it was all smoke and mirrors. And when this came out, there was a, an SEC investigation and found out that there had been a lot of lying, a lot of misstatement of value, a lot of uh, stock fraud. 
And at the time, that was in 96, at the time it was the biggest scandal of its type ever. And we were right there in the middle of this one. So this was our big opportunity to, you know, for Synergistic to get out of the publishing business and get into the the protected development business. And it was another huge scandal erupted around it. So it all blew up. Anyway, what happened was that their stock value went was went to about one fourth what it had been before. Our options were completely worthless. Uh, people were quitting and people were being fired and divisions were being shuffled. And uh, it was just a very unpleasant place to be. So I left shortly after that. Uh, it, it, the process continued for two more years. So in, in between 96 and 98, that company was sold and resold and acquired and passed on. They went to um, Havas. Havas was a French company that got it next. And then Vivendi was another French company. This was, they were like a, um, a utility company in France. I mean, like a, you know electrical services provider. And they bought a, a computer game development company. It just they, they didn't have any of the so, right people. They didn't have the right people. So it just kept failing and failing and failing. Eventually, it came back to the U.S. Uh, Activision Blizzard was formed. They were part of all of this. Well, Activision had been independent. Blizzard was in, involved in this. They were the biggest uh, surviving uh, developer. Uh, but they then joined up with Activision and bought the whole thing from Vivendi. So it came back to the U.S., the, 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 the bare remnants of what was left of this. But yes. all this happened in two years. It was bought and rebought and rebought and rebought. And there was just nobody left that I knew at the end of it. So we got out. That was, that was the end of Synergistic doing uh, computer games. And I did other computer stuff after that. But, but it, was a, it was a traumatic time. Very chaotic. Just you know, companies dying left and right. It was really, really depressing. Yeah, it sounds like Ken got out at just the right moment, huh? Ken Ken did very well. Yeah, he did. He did. I I'm I, I knew him well enough to know he, he he really, really regretted it. He he hated leaving, but but he did get out intact and, and well well off. So you know, more power to him. I I don't wish him ill. It wasn't his fault this happened. So some of the people that were uh, oh, this was another little trid tidbit from this. Um a uh, couple of the people at, at CUC that kind of orchestrated this whole thing, they had they got arrested for security fraud, and they were fi fined something like three point two billion dollars each. So there's a lot of money, a lot of money. But the court said they have to pay it back at a rate of two thousand dollars a month, yeah, each something like that. So it was going to be like one hundred and twenty four years before we got our share of of any damages. <laughs> So I didn't think I'd wait for it. We we was moved on. It was it was That's a sad of, story. Yeah, it was kind of pathetic. You know, when but I I did see that, you know, looking back on it and thinking about what happened, it, it this kind of thing happened a lot, starting, you know, with Atari and Time Warner back in eighty three. Every, every after that there were big companies that would try to buy their way in and they always screwed it up. Not always, but Nine times out of ten, they they buy in, buy the best developers there were, the best brands, the best people, the best companies, and destroy them. And it happened over and over and over. So, yeah, it was a, the, the lesson being what never never sell out or uh, or or sell out and make sure you got all that you ever hoped to get. Hmm. But yeah, you know, some people did that, and you know, but. Um, yeah, my lesson was to not sell out. My lesson was not to put my my fate in somebody else's hands. Uh, not a not an investor, not a parent company, not a holding company. Never com never give complete control, because again, I I wasn't in it even from the beginning. I wasn't in it. You just wanted to program games, right? Company. That's it. You know, I wanted the experience. I wanted the you know hands and, on. Yeah. Now I kind of regret not making um, you know millions of dollars along the way. I wish that had happened too, but <laughs> that, would have been nice. wasn't, that wasn't the goal. So uh, I did I did get to enjoy my goal, which was to work on computers, work on software, work on games. So worked out okay. So I guess it, after all this, you're, you're still doing uh, software design, right? Just not in the the game space. Uh, I saw something like a my pattern designer. I think I saw. Yeah, after Sierra, after 97, um, 
I did pattern design software for about 15 years. I'm, I'm pretty much out of that now. I'm, it might still continue. I have some uh, patents there and some um, intellectual property that we're, we might try to sell, but I, I, I'm, uh, I don't want to do that anymore because the people – in starting that division of, my, of the synergistic experience – um, I, one of the things that I decided there was to, to never again be um, a, a single sole proprietor. I was going to try to find a group of partners and work, work with a group. And that group was a, a good group. It was a good group to work with. We, we did work together for 10 or 15 years, but they slowly went their separate ways. Or uh, you know, final one, the, you know, the evangelist, my closest partner in the group, died a couple of years ago. And just isn't as fun, you know, without the person that was really excited about the software. I, this particular software was not what I was excited about. I like writing software. I like supporting software and I like the business side of it. And I like working with these partners, but I didn't care that much about sewing patterns. I don't sew. So, you know, to me, it was, a, it was a computer aided design. Yeah. Product. And that was, that was exciting, but I didn't care what the design was. That's the, she cared, you know, the, you know, the partner cared. And when she died, I, it's just hard to keep, keep things going. So, so no, at the moment I'm trying to shut it all down. It's mostly shut down, not completely. You know, this morning before I, I got your call, I had some customer service emails from that old group. I still answer the emails. Oh. Nobody else is doing it anymore. I, I still like talking to the customer. Tell me somebody's found a way to exploit the pattern designer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Negative yeah. 500 threads or something. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you looking towards uh, the future wise? Do you have some, some game projects that have been sort of sitting in a desk no. drawer somewhere and all the, uh, I do have some game projects, but I'm not going to do them anymore. Now, after Sierra, we I looked at starting another game company. We we had a company called Eclectic Eclectic Games that almost got started, and we had a variety of good designs. I'd love to have done, but it it required more money. You know, starting uh, in in around two thousand, that was, you know after Sierra, it was it was just a different realm. You needed more money. You needed a bigger business. You needed more risk. It was all um, bigger stakes. And- yeah, and it was the it was the part of the business that I didn't like. That was you know the core of of, of new of starting a new business, and I just don't want to do it. So no, I'm not likely to do games again, and I don't know if I'll be doing software again. I'm going to do something different, and I've haven't decided what yet. It's, maybe maybe it's yodeling. I... <laughs> uh, you know, I last year it was karate. I was I've been a karate teacher for a number of years. And oh I, really? What style? I, I thought about uh, Shita Ryu and, and Ishin Ryu a little bit and sometimes Goju Ryu, but mostly Shita Ryu. So, uh, but I, I've, I taught with a group uh, for about 10 years and I thought about going full time with that, but my knees are starting to go. I, I've been sparring too much and my knees are getting shot. And so I, I don't want to m- make that worse. So. <laughs> So no, probably not going to do karate. I'm going to travel for a while. I got to find something, but I haven't decided what it's going to be yet. I don't tend to go back. I, I'm not going to go repeat anything. I my son, my youngest son, just went through a high school computer science class, and I was a, a teaching assistant in the class. So oh, I, I went, neat. That was cool. That was a lot of fun. But uh, as part of that class, they had to do a graphic based game of some sort, or, or and and. Uh, I rewrote Dungeon Campaign as a 3D, you know, graphic environment as an example to, you know, to show show them. That was a lot of fun. I thought, man, then I thought, no, I don't ever want to do this again. <laughs> I, I've been there, I've done that. I, I can't. I don't want to look back. What did you do with the game? Is it is it out somewhere? Can we? No, no, I didn't do anything. I, I showed it to the <laughs> class. That's all it was for. It was just for them. No, it's uh, I, you know, I've I've been approached by people who want to do some of those old games on uh, cell phones. And do cell phone versions of some of the old games. Great, go for it. But I didn't want to do it myself. I, I, I think it'd be a fine thing for somebody to do, but I don't want to do it. I'll, I offered them the rights, and I'll give them what code I have and advice, and talk to them about it, and they can refer to the names if they want. But I'm not going to do it. I did see on Wikipedia mm. about Odyssey: The Complete Adventure. 
Now, somebody there was claiming that this was the first game that allowed cheat codes. Don't remember that. Something about um, go to seven seventy, go to seven seventy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that is really a cheat code. Yeah, I had. Uh, you you could break out of the program. I think even just hitting Control C, you would break out of the program, and you can then type go to. Well, oh yeah, I remember. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I had a in the document. Uh, in the user manual, there was a list of the variables. And this was something you could do in Integer Basic. You could hit Control C, break out of the program, type, you know, G equals 100. Now you have 100 gold. G equals 100, press return, type go to whatever, and you're back in the program. So you could, I, I put that in the manual so that people could play with it. Um, again, it was because that's what I like to do with games. I like to play with them as opposed to play them. And I thought other people might like that, too. No, I mean, yeah, they did. Some did. But others would just spoil the game that way. One of the things they found was, since I gave multiple entry points, uh, people would go in and uh, modify the words. Mod they'd go in and look at the variables. And uh, um, instead of buying um, pork pies, instead of buying pork pies, let's buy cow patties. Funny. Oh, so funny. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and, and so they would change the program and then release it to their friends and it still had my name on it. And I uh -oh. was kind of, so, so that was the last time I, I gave out, uh, ready access to the code, uh, was that one and only time, but cause it, there were too many cases of embarrassing versions of the program floating around after that. <laughs> I'm guessing they got worse than cow patties. It did. It did. <laughs> <laughs> it did. All right. Well, thanks again. It's, yeah, it's, it's fun. fun. It's fun. It was, uh, I enjoyed talking about it all. Yeah. So look up Jerry Jewell. He has some similar good stories from uh, Serious Software Days. What's his name? Jerry Jewell? Jerry Jewell. Yeah. J-E-W-E-L. I'll... Um, oh, like the Jewell. <laughs> yeah. He, 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 you'll, he's on Facebook. You can connect him the same way you found me. That sounds good. So... I don't know who else. I, I don't know how to get hold of Ken Williams nowadays. I've lost track of him. He'd be fun to talk to. Yeah, it seemed like a couple times I've gotten close, but my understanding is he doesn't like doing interviews. Yeah. I don't know if that's changed. I think that's the case. He's and probably told the same stories, you know. <laughs> probably. Probably. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway. Every fun. time I see pictures of him, he's on his yacht. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he did okay. No. He did. He did quite well. He did quite well, and and he was a good person. And I like Roberta too. Uh, there, I'd love they, to talk to her. Yeah, yeah. I never got to know Roberta very well. You know, Ken and I were the programmers. We had a, an immediate bond. Roberta was the game designer. I should have had a bond with her. I just I, I found Ken first, and uh, we we became friends. And I Roberta was. I never, I never became as good a friend with her. She was a terrific lady, but and loved her game designs, but didn't get to know her as well. I've talked to several people from Sierra. I remember Al Lowe. That was pretty memorable. <laughs> uh, Al, uh, he, he was, was he was one of the ones that had early conflicts with uh, with that new management. His his group. He was protecting his group, and they weren't going to allow that. Yeah, Josh Mandel. Yeah, I didn't know Josh. Yeah, he was he was up here, but I didn't get to know him. Uh, the Quest for Glory yeah. team, I talked to them. Mm. Oh, yeah, excellent. You know, their offices, I, I don't know if, you, if they talked about their offices. I, I couldn't stand their offices up here. It reminded me of a Dilbert cart cartoon. Because, <laughs> you know, our offices, we, we considered the people to be, you know, the prime treasure of the company. And so you, you gave everybody a private office. You gave everybody windows. Every, everybody in the, in our office was treated, you know, like a high level person in their offices. Only the, uh, marketing and salespeople had window offices. Everybody else was uh, in the same area. How, and, how telling. Yes. And, and depressing. Cause they, they also used it as uh, secondary storage locations. They would pile boxes of goods in these cubicles it was it was terrible, a really depressing place to work. This was uh, Sierra, uh -huh. under Ken Williams. It was like that. Uh, it, that was mostly 
post Ken Williams. But it started out, yeah, when Ken was here, it was partially that way. It just got worse. It just got worse. Yeah, Ken, when he moved up here, he put all of his executives, you know, along the, and his executives were contract people and finance people and sales people and marketing people. They got the windows. Yeah. I'm sure some of those guys had better, better locations. I only, uh, I didn't go over that often, so I didn't see everything, but it was a depressing place to see. I, you know, they they didn't really. Dilbertian. <laughs> yep, yep. So, anyway. I guess I'll let you go. I'm a little curious about the weapons I see in the back there. Is that part mm. of your martial arts stuff? Those, uh, the axe and the. Oh, hell no. <laughs> 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 didn't know those were showing. Hang on. That looks like a Gandalf oh. staff or something. Yeah, this is, a, this is all Halloween stuff. Oh. Various Halloweens. This was a Gandalf staff that I built of sorts. Thought you might have worked this, some of this into your karate classes. Yeah, no, no. Karate, you know, <laughs> see, it's all in the cabinet. It's it's put away. No, my the real weapons are they're around here somewhere. I don't think I have them in here. I think they're downstairs. But no, these are just Halloween props that uh, my son left behind. You got that, some kind of masks up on the top shelf. Looks like. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I collect masks. I have a. A variety of, of, of obscure hobbies. Uh, masks is one of them. Like masks. Yeah, that's yeah. A... When I go to places, yeah, well, uh, let's see. Here's, here's dust covered. God, very dust covered mask. Just whatever. It's I, I, I get obs, uh, obscure and strange masks from different places. This is from Venice. You know, oh, just, that's a... I don't have a good place to display them at the moment. I other collections have taken over the the, the mask space. I I collect clocks. <laughs> clocks. I have weird clocks. Like I have cuckoo clocks. Or? Uh, no, um, oddball electronic clocks. Like this one is the uh, you know the the pins come out. Uh, this well, let's see. This one is you can't see this unless it's running. But there's this arm that, that, that flies back and forth and there's LEDs on it that'll light up and at different points in here and it'll, basically you can get the time of day and the day of the week will be floating in midair in li in lights. So just odd clocks. This one is a binary clock. If you can read read when this when it's going. There's there's red, blue and green lights that blink and yellow. And if you know which ones to look at, you could read the time in binary. <laughs> so just little things. So it just I have collections that supplant other collections and supplant other collections. The the ones that have been supplanted most recently just end up getting dumped in here. So I need I need I need more space. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, hopefully be back next week with a, a review. I'm probably going to be either looking at uh, the uh, new Grimoire game, uh, if I can manage to get my hands on the uh, the code for that. Uh, otherwise, I'm not really sure what I'll do, so just stay tuned. Uh, i got some requests to cover uh, Seven Days uh, to Die. It's a game I'm really a big fan of. Some of you guys have played that with me, so I might do that instead. We'll see. Uh, if you have a strong opinion on it, just let me know uh, on the uh, YouTube comment section. Uh, as always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very, 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 verily. <laughs> you got to throw in a verily every now and then, right? Much for your support of the show. Really appreciate it, guys uh, and gals. Uh, really just means a ton to me uh, when you guys support the show. Uh, all I ask for, uh, for doing this is a buck a show. You can set that up over at Patreon. A lot of cool perks you can get with that, too. Uh, but mostly just uh, my gratitude, and you're keeping these episodes in production. Uh, you can also support the show if you go to the uh, matchchat.us site, click on support the show. A lot of options there, PayPal. Uh, you can even just buy games uh, from GOG. If you use my affiliate link, uh, then I'll get a small cut. It won't cost you anything extra. Uh, you can also just uh, like the video or tell people about it or tweet about it, uh, Facebook about it, uh, Google Plus about it. You can put it on your MySpace page. <laughs> I'm just kidding about that. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. What about that uh, news from the Matt Cave? Well, let's 
see. News. Conan X. Oh, this is from Stig. Uh, Conan Exiles uh, getting a free, a new free expansion. Man, I love the sound of that. New free expansion. Yeah, that's got to be music to your ears if you're a fan of Conan Exiles. Uh, this one's got a winter biome. It's called uh, the Frozen North, a.k.a. St. Cloud, Minnesota. Uh, they actually filmed it right outside my window here. Uh, they've added a bunch of stuff as well. Uh, you got brewing. <laughs> You've got me at brewing. I'm a, always one of the game where I could brew my own beer. Uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, let's see. Mead, wine, absinthe. Wow. <laughs> uh, absinthe. I think that might be a first. I don't know. Uh, bug. Bug soup. Um, I wonder if they have uh, de <laughs> Oh, yeah. Demon blood sausage. Uh, I don't see rat on the stick here. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they didn't leave that out. Uh, anyway, that looks like a lot of fun. I haven't actually played this Conan Exiles game. Kind of more of a, I hate to say it, more of a World of Warcraft uh, kind of guy when it comes to these things. Uh, but uh, if you played this, uh, let me know what you think. Is it, uh, you know, is it is it different enough, I guess, from WoW to uh, want me to take a look at it? And I'm also curious how close it is to the uh, Conan books. You know, I love the books and the movies, uh, so that might be a draw for me. But uh, anyway, uh, Stig also wrote in about this update of TS3 MP. In other words, uh, the Elder Scrolls Three Morrowind, a multiplayer fan project, now has an NPC sync. Uh, so I'm not really sure what was going on with this project before. It's kind of the first time I'm hearing about this, but apparently they had the multiplayer capability before, but now it's uh, a lot better because I think they've. If I'm reading this right, they got the NPCs and the quest uh, synced up, uh, so you can you can go on a quest with other people. At least I think that's what they mean. Uh, the Video says it's a, quote, closer approximation of what people have wanted multiplayer Morrowind to be. Uh, so anyway, chime in if I've gotten that totally wrong, uh, what <laughs> this synchronization is all about. I'm also curious just about this project in general. I love the fan stuff. and I'm, uh, I really love Morrowind. It's actually my favorite uh, game out of that series, uh, that and Daggerfall. Uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, let me know. Let's see, Matt W. Uh, sent this in. Uh, Joe and Hannah of Well Not Studios. Oh, you love uh, Joe and Hannah. They're uh, still around. Uh, I think uh, Joe's actually uh, been in the hospital, look like, on the uh, on the page there. So not sure what's going on with that, but I hope you're okay after watching this, Joe. Hope you get well soon. Uh, anyway, they've uh, released an update to their game, Copper Dreams. Uh, it's called Ticks, Tiles, and Dodging Bullets. This is on Kickstarter, uh, the Kickstarter page. And I thought this was uh, worth mentioning because of this uh, ticks idea. We're not talking about the kind that give you Lyme disease. Uh, but those uh, that are represented by a quarter second of gameplay but are abstract. Let me uh, start over. So ticks, it's, it's to do with the way that the game handles time. Right? So think about turn-based turn -based game and actions and how long it takes to do things. Right. Uh, so they've got this concept they're calling ticks. Uh, these are represented by a quarter second of gameplay but are abstract in that longer animations can play out during these or multiple hits shown off individually. So behind the scene, these play out like regular turns, uh, whereas in the gameplay, they appear as linear time with ticks. You can quantify how long your action will take compared to the enemy's actions. You know, it's, it's a little uh, over my head, uh, but it's, it definitely sounds cool. I think I see where they're going with this, and you can look at the, uh, the videos on the page. But anyway, this is something that, to me, sounds like it has the potential to really revolutionize uh, the genre. So I really want to uh, learn more about that. Uh, hopefully I can even get uh, Joe and Hannah on soon. Uh, hint, hint, <laughs> uh, to talk about this. I know they've made a lot of progress since last time I had them on the show. Uh, a lot of news. Uh, moving on then, we've got uh, Empire Deluxe Combined Kickstarter. I did mention this on my Facebook page. Uh, you know I'm a huge fan of uh, the Empire game. I looked at it back in episode 307. used to play this uh, into the wee hours of the morning with my dad. <laughs> Way back, I guess that must have been in the late 80s, early 90s, somewhere around in there. Uh, anyway, they're back uh, with this package. This is a combination package. Uh, it's got the old games, but they've also added some really cool stuff. It had the hot seat uh, before and the email before, but now they got network multiplayer. They've got uh, new map editors, and they're, it's all done in C uh, Sharp with the Unity engine. Uh, they were only asking for 5K in their Kickstarter, but they're way past that. I think they're actually more than twice that now. Still 21 days left on the clock, so... Uh, I really want you to go check this out. If you're a fan of strategy games, I think you really owe it to yourself to uh, look at Empire. Uh, but really, these are just cool guys. They're good people. Uh, the uh, two marks, <laughs> I kind of see them in my head. Uh, they even 
uh, the, the Mark that's doing this actually set me up with the Mark uh, that did the uh, Empire Deluxe. So I'll be able to get him on the show uh, this Thursday, uh, thanks to him. So uh, I think they're really good people. Definitely worth checking out their project. That's uh, Empire Deluxe Combined Kickstarter. All right, and the final bit of news, uh, Cleve Blakemore has uh, released his long-awaited game, Grimwire, <laughs> Grimwire, Heralds of the Winged Exemplar. I'm try saying that about three times fast. Huh? Now, you probably know about this project. I know a lot of you guys have been tracking him. Uh, it's been, on, been around for over 20 years now, it says. Uh, uh, but it's finally out, so it's really exciting stuff. Now, I did back this project. I think I mentioned it a couple times uh, when it was at the Indiegogo uh, stage. Uh, still, I still haven't personally received my keys for this uh, to give this thing a drive yet. Uh, apparently, he's having some trouble getting those out. So, you know, <laughs> I waited. We waited 20 years. We can wait a few extra days, right? Uh, so, just to take your time with that cleave, it's fine. Uh, but I'd like to know if you if you've managed to play it yet. I really want to hear your impressions of it. It looks like it's going to be right up my alley. Very uh, old school. Uh, it kind of looks like uh, some of the earlier Might and Magic games. Uh, somebody compared it to Wizardry. Uh, seven, I think, or the game that a Wizardry Seven should have been, something along those lines. Uh, anyway, I haven't got a real good uh, feel for it just by looking at the movie and the screenshots. So uh, I really just want to play this thing. Uh, if you have had that privilege, uh, please let me know what you think about it. It is a little bit uh, steep. It's thirty-six dollars basically on Steam, and that's uh, with a ten percent discount. So you know, it's it's a little much. I don't want to buy it twice, uh, so I will wait for my my key for this but I'd love to hear your opinions on it. And, and uh, congratulations uh, to Cleve. who has been working on this forever, so I'm really happy to see that he's uh, been able to complete this project. All right. Whew, man. You know what I want? <laughs> that ale of the week. So I've shown you this uh, even more excellent drinking horn a few times, and of course this was a Steinar, uh, the Viking that did the horn for me, and he put this artwork on. Uh, but I haven't had a chance to thank the artist who did the uh, the design on this uh, this uh, horn. So I want to put their picture up here. This is Tanner Field, uh, who did the artwork. He's the uh, guy on the left there in that awesome Iron Maiden shirt. <laughs> Hell yeah! And uh, to his right, we have uh, Emily Silver, who uh, she's the one that, that hooked me up with uh, Tanner to get the artwork done. And she's she's been great uh, helping helping to uh, bring all this together. So. Uh, anyway, thank you uh, both, uh, Tanner and Emily. Awesome stuff. Love the artwork. And I uh, <laughs> well, I love this photo, too. That's that's great. Uh, so anyway, thanks again. All right, so for the ale of the week, uh, I found this today. Uh, this is the limited release uh, Lagunita Slag. Laganator <laughs> Lager. Laganator, Laganator Lager. Laganator Lager. Yeah. Lagunator Lager. <laughs> Man, that just sounds so weird. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, what kind of beer is this? IBU uh, 42.0, uh, OG 1.075. Hope that means something to you, uh, as it does to me, being a beer expert. Of course, I know exactly what that means. Uh, uh, alcohol, 7.9% uh, by volume. Uh, so that's a you know it's a little bit a little bit more than you'd find in a typical beer, but it's not crazy. <laughs> what do we have on the side here? Well, he awoke from the time transfer, naked, damp, dizzy, disoriented, and alone, except for the bottle of some Auburn ale he still clutched in his sweating hand. I'm not making this up; it's on the bottle. Uh, he looked to the right and then to the left for some kind of shelter. In an instant, a towering figure cast a long shadow over him and he saw a single enormous hand extended his way. All of his synapses crackled as he recognized the massive and terrifying form as that of the great brewmaster. Yeah, I'm so glad I'm reading this now before uh, I actually drank the, uh, the ale. Uh, he heard a deep voice say, Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> what is this? Uh, he now knew the bottle in his hand must contain the rare Laginator and he also knew that he might survive to enjoy it. Uh, experience all the terror and the drama, or give us a call. Holy cow, man, I've never seen such an awesome write-up on a bottle before. Uh, whew, what can I say about this? Where is this? Uh, this is out of uh, Petaluma, California, and Chicago, Illinois, so not really sure which is which. I got a little picture of a dog there. Oh, it'll be Buck. Anyway, well, I don't even know if I need to drink it at this point. I've had enough enjoyment. But uh, uh, anyway, we will get this open and see what it's all about. 
All right, so I got some of this lag here in the rather excellent drinking horn. I've been smelling this. I'm a little stopped up, a little congested, but I can uh, definitely smell the hops in this. It's a very pleasant aroma. Uh, yeah, I definitely smell the hops more than anything else. There might be a little bit of a uh, sort of mild citrusy, little lemon zest uh, kind of flavor or aroma to it, but I mostly just smell the hops. Uh, it smells really good. It's not overpowering. I <laughs> no alcohol fumes or anything unpleasant. Uh, this smells really, really good. So uh, let's give it a taste. That's a very refined uh, flavor on this one. Uh, yeah, it's got a kind of a, how do I even describe that? <laughs> Let me try it again. Well, I'll say it's, it's a very refreshing flavor. Um, it's kind of got this sort of uh, nutty flavor to it. Uh, it's not real bitter. There's definitely no bitterness here. Uh, the hops are kind of uh, not really asserted all that strongly. I thought maybe from the aroma it would be a lot more hoppy than it is. Actually kind of a mild flavor. I uh, got a little, it's, it's kind of very, it, let me try it one more time. <laughs> this is a pretty complex brew. Uh, it definitely packs a punch, uh, but that goes away really quickly. And then you get sort of this, uh, I don't know, sort of nutty, kind of hoppy aftertaste. Uh, it's, it's, there's a word for what I'm trying to uh, describe here, and it's just not, <laughs> not coming to me. I'll try it one more time here. Yeah, I don't, I'll just say it's kind of light bodied, uh, a lot of flavor initially, and then kind of a pleasant aftertaste. You definitely don't taste any uh, strong alcohol uh, flavors or anything like that. It's actually a pretty pleasant drink. I think this would be good, if you, especially if you don't want something real sort of heavy and dark. Uh, this would be really nice. I'm not really sure what kind of hops are in here, but I actually kind of like the flavor. It's a little definitely different than the typical uh, lager. I'll say that for it. Uh, anyway, I really, really like this. It's not a real uh, strong, pungent sort of brew, uh, but you don't always want that. And if you're okay with something lighter, I think this would be a great choice. The lag. I'm going to go ahead and go uh, four out of five drinking horns on it. Don't think it's uh, quite a five. Uh, I'm almost tempted to give it the five just because of the awesome story on the bottle. But uh, I think four out of five is uh, probably more apt for this uh, Lagenator lag <laughs> uh, lager. All right, so let's uh, wrap this up with a quotation. And we were talking a lot in this uh, video about management and, and business decisions, executives, and all this kind of stuff. And I found a quote that I liked uh, from the a former president of the United States. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt, to go something like this. The best executive is the one who has sense enough to pick good men to do what he wants done, and the self-restraint to keep from meddling with them while they do it. <laughs> if those aren't words of wisdom, I don't know what are. See you guys next week.